Port Aventura is the premier theme park destination in all of Spain. This park reminds me of a Busch Gardens park because of how it blends theming with thrills. The resort opened back in 1995 with just one park in Port Aventura, but the resort added a second theme park in 2017 with Ferrari Land. The latter feels more like a large theme park land rather than a full-fledged theme park. So in this video, I will rank the top 20 rides at the entire Port Aventura resort. Before starting the list, I want to note a few rides that will not be included. One, I have not visited the Caribe Aquatic Park, so none of the water slides at their water park will be featured. Two, I will not be including any shows. These are a key component of any Port Aventura visit, but I don't think it's fair to include them on this list because I've only seen a few of them, and they can change year to year. Three, I unfortunately have not gotten to experience Templo del Fuego. This unique attraction has been closed for refurbishments in all my visits. Starting off the list at number 20 is Thrill Towers Up at Ferrari Land. This SNS space shop blasts riders 18 stories into the air. The launch isn't too intense, and you only get a little bit of floater airtime at the top, but the views of the surrounding area are stunning. Number 19, Crazy Barrels at Port Aventura. This Hus breakdance has an interesting cycle. It lasts for a decent amount of time. It starts off slow, but the speed is really cranked up in the second half, so you get some nice whip as you're flung across the platform. Number 18, Teacups at Port Aventura. This mock flat ride allows the user to spin the cup as much or as little as they please. I decide to spin the wheel as much as possible for a dizzying ride. Number 17, Tomahawk at Port Aventura. This junior CCI wood coaster is intertwined with the bigger Stampeda, and it has some exciting bits. The big turn midway through the ride has some good sustained laterals, and then there are some tight turns towards the end giving quick jolt to laterals, much like Pegasus at Mount Olympus. Then if you ride in the back, you'll even get some floater air time in the final drop as well. And no matter which row you ride in, this coaster is fairly smooth. Number 16, El Secreto de los Mayas at Port Aventura. This is the world's best mirror maze, and quite possibly the hardest. The attraction takes place in a giant room. What makes it particularly evil is that there's a turntable in the center of the maze that leads to different parts of the labyrinth, so it's near impossible to tell where you already went and where you're going next. Prepare to get lost. Then if that's not enough, there is a room with a dozen doors later in the attraction, and only one of them will lead you to the exit. Number 15, Racing Legends at Ferrari Land. This motion simulator feels like an old simulator you'd find at Universal Studios. You sit in a small motion platform. You then shake and get spritzed with water at points. The visuals are fine. My biggest gripe with the attraction though is the pre-boarding experience. You have four, yes four, pre-shows. It takes forever to get on this ride. Number 14, Grand Canyon Rapids. This Intamin Rapids ride is light on the rapids. Only one of them is able to get you wet. However, this ride does other things well. The ride has fantastic rock work throughout, and the rafts move through the ride at a pretty good clip. And there is one effect that can get you quite wet at the end. There's an evil water cannon right before the final lift hill that randomly goes off. You are playing Russian roulette with that one. Number 13, El Diablo at Port Aventura. This is the longest mine train arrow ever built. I like the first and final third. You have some fun turns with a bit of force to them, and you have a neat setting going over rides or through tunnels, but this ride's pacing struggles from all that length. You have not one, not two, but three different lift hills, and the second third is pretty dull. You have some bland elements over a maintenance road, but the visuals and reasonably smooth ride make it the best family coaster at the resort. Number 12, Serpiente Emplumada at Port Aventura. This Schwarzkopf spinning ride is one I haven't seen elsewhere. You ride in these giant discs. They spin very fast at the start, inducing strong centripetal forces that pin you to the seat back. The arms then start to spin and bob while the discs are still spinning. You get some nice whip on the downward motion because it seems to enhance the spinning. The ride runs a long cycle and it's sure to leave you dizzy. Number 11, Silver River Flume at Port Aventura. This mock log flume has some neat interactions with El Diablo, and it offers three drops. The first two are small, but the final one is sizable and decently steep. 
then you are sure to come off this ride very wet. Not only do the drops get your upper body soaked, but the logs tend to fill with water, getting your feet drenched. Number 10. Thrill Towers Down at Ferrari Land This is the superior SNS drop tower. This one slowly lifts you up, giving you more time to take in the sights. Then you have a solid drop. There's some suspense, and the start of the drop gives some decent air time. But as fun as this is, the resort has a better drop tower I'll get to later. Number 9. Stampeda at Port Aventura This dual track CCI wood coaster does some things very well. The racing aspect is excellent, because the tracks remain close to each other for much of the course. And the tangled mess of track makes it hard to determine where you're going next. This ride has some great laterals, particularly in the low turns and turnarounds. However, this ride's pacing really suffers in the second half. A trim was added to the first drop after the ride's inaugural season, so by the end of the ride, the airtime is gone and you are crawling. The other issue is that Stampeda can run quite rough if you ride it further back in the train, so definitely try for the front if possible. Number 8. Flying Dreams of Ferrari Land This is a good flying theater. The motion is well synchronized and you have some nice visuals between the Ferrari factory, famous landmarks, and finally Ferrari Land. But as with Racing Dreams, the pre-boarding experience is infuriating. You have four different pre-shows and holding rooms. Number 7. Tatuki Splash at Port Aventura This is an extended Intamin Shoot the Shoots. It's very atmospheric with the lush trees and rock work. Then you have two drops. The first is small, but it has some zip to it. The second one is a far larger double down. If you have ridden Congo Falls at Kings Island, or Whitewater Falls at California's Great America, the drop rides similarly, and that's a good thing. The second hump gives a very good pop of airtime. As for how wet you get, it depends on chance. The drops themselves offer a comfortable amount of wetness, but you could get hit by a stray splash in the lift hill, which can absolutely drench you. Number 6. Street Mission at Port Aventura The main park sorely needed a traditional dark ride, and this ride more than fits the bill. This is a really strong shooting dark ride. Sesame Street fans will be in love with all the details and characters. Most of the ride is screen-based, but you have the occasional animatronic, plus a few physical targets to take aim at. I like how each scene has its own look, feel, and theme. It prevents the ride from feeling repetitive. There was no shortage of targets, and the guns worked flawlessly. The one weird thing with this ride though is that the larger targets were worth more points. I'm used to it being the other way, which made this one a bit easier than I would have liked. Number 5. Furious Baco at Port Aventura This is a weird launched wing coaster from Intamin. It is one of the fastest rides in Europe, accelerating riders to 84 miles per hour, or 135 kilometers per hour, in just 3.5 seconds. The hydraulic launch has some good oomph to it, especially because it needs to propel those heavy trains up an incline. Then, with all that speed, Baco stays low to the ground. The highest point is just 46 feet or 14 meters tall, which is stunningly short for a ride like this. Most family coasters are taller, so you rip through the layout. You have a nice dip after the launch with strong sustained airtime. Then you have a series of turns. And towards the end, there's a fantastic inline twist loaded with hang time. It is cool getting hang time at speeds as fast as Baco goes. While many of the elements aren't too notable, the speed more than makes up for it. But this ride does have one flaw, the smoothness or lack thereof. The ride is very bumpy, particularly on the outside seats. While you won't get any head banging, your body will be jostled uncontrollably at several points. I have a separate review for this coaster, as well as all the other rides in the top 5. Number 4. Dragon Con at Port Aventura This iconic B&M sit-down looping coaster feels like the combination of Kumba and Kraken. The layout is nearly identical to Kraken, just with an extra corkscrew at the end. And the forces are comparable to that ride too. Most have good force or snap to them. But the best element is by far the zero-g roll. The train is violently pushed through it, inducing wicked laterals for all. This is a fairly intense ride between the ride's power and length, and even after 25 plus years of operation, it is still running quite smoothly. 
Number 3. Hurricane Condor at Port Aventura. This has an argument as the most intense drop tower in the world. This Intamin giant drop has immense height, as it stands 33 stories tall, so you get some spectacular views of the resort, Mediterranean, and mountains. And you have some unique riding positions too. Towers 1, 2, and 5 are sit-down cars. Towers 3 and 4 are stand-up, floorless, tilting cars. It is extremely unnerving experiencing a drop tower this huge in that position. You only tilt 15 degrees at the top, but that's more than enough to force you to stare at the ground. Then the drop is incredible. It is suspenseful, and it lasts forever. You get a strong stomach drop sensation from the position you're put in, and you get good floater air time the whole way down, especially on the stand-up side, because you have quite a bit of clearance between your shoulders and the harness. Number 2. Red Force of Ferrari Land This is the signature ride at the resort's second gate, and it is an imposing one. It is the tallest and fastest coaster in all of Europe. An LSM launch accelerates you to 112 miles per hour, or 180 kilometers per hour. You don't have the same initial kick as the accelerator coasters using hydraulic launches, but you start accelerating at a shocking rate midway down the track. You hear and feel the ride's power. If you're up front, you'll feel the wind pushing your cheeks back. It is a blissful sensation. Then you have a 367 foot or 112 meter tall top hat. You get a wonderful view plus some great airtime. You get good floater airtime at the apex. Then the drop doesn't have the extra twist like King Dakar Top Thrill Dragster, so you get sustained floater the entire way down. Then before you hit the final brakes, you have a quick hop upwards, giving some more floater airtime for all. This ride may be short, but it's an absolute rush. I think the superior top hat and finale more than compensate for the weaker launch than the North American Stratas. And coming in number one is Shambhala Port Aventura. This is the world's best B&M hyper, and in my opinion, it's not even close. A back row ride on Shambhala is magical. This ride is ginormous, as it's closer to a giga coaster than the minimum threshold for a hyper. Then you have a series of fantastic drops. Each one delivers copious amounts of floater airtime. And because of their size and the long trains, the large drops even induce a stomach drop sensation in the back row. I rarely get that on any coaster nowadays, and it's really fun when it happens. Along with all that airtime, you have some great positive G's in the pullout from the first drop, and the far turnaround. Then you have spectacular views of the water and mountains, not only on the lift hill, but for the entirety of the ride. It is surreal getting those views while levitating out of your seat simultaneously. Last but not least, this ride is immaculately smooth. All these reasons are why it's one of the most addictive and rewritable coasters in the world. So those are the top 20 rides and attractions at the Port Aventura Resort. What are your favorite rides at these Spanish theme parks? Let me know down in the comments. If you enjoyed this countdown, I would appreciate it if you gave this video a like, and you considered subscribing, because there'll be a lot more roller coaster and amusement park videos here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for watching.